everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. My name is Todd Rothman. In this video, we're going to learn about the conformations of alkanes. Now, this is one of the big parts of this chapter, okay? So there are two major parts. There's the conformations of alkanes and conformations of cycloalkanes. And they're both very important. So this is our first of the two. Now, uh, what I want to say is that, again, if you look at the sections here, there's a lot of different, se there's five sections, and this is probably going to take over an hour, a good, maybe even close to two hours to get through this video. We'll see in a moment how long it takes, well, you know, once we're done. Uh, but I have to say, you want to make sure to master this. This idea that we're going to go through here, this confirmational idea, is very important for your exam and, of course, for the whole year. Okay? So let's get started, and here's a summary of the things that we're going to do. Now, the first thing is, remember, conformations is a collection of all the different snapshots of a molecule. And the conformation, uh, the individual conformer is a, an individual picture, right? So now, there is an issue that we have to first address, and, and that is, how do we draw these on paper? See, if we look at a molecule, so here's my big molecule here right and there's a constant rotation and they're both actually rotating but to make things simple we could just rotate one side now the question is how do I take pictures do I take it every time it changes a degree or do I ch do it every time it changes 60 degrees 90 degrees you know so the idea is that we have to come up with a standard and it turns out that fortunate for, for us, it's not every degree because that would be 361 pictures on paper, right? So what we could do is every 60 degrees. So here's the blue and the red. And if I turn it 60 degrees, now it's like that. I turn it another 60 degrees, now it's like that, and so on. So every 60 degrees is when we're going to make turns. All right. Now, let me just put this down. Okay. So, the idea of how we can draw them, there are two ways that we can draw conformations. The first one is known as a sawhorse projection, and that's very much what you're used to seeing up to now. We've drawn pretty much sawhorse projections a few times now uh, at this point in the semester. Now, if you look here, what I want to point out about a sawhorse, actually, let me show you with my molecule again. Now, if I have, let's say, the two the the uh the two red pointing straight up notice that these two white ones are going to the back and the blue and the green are coming out towards me right so that's how this looks right now now this is a sore horse projection if i rotate it so that the red and the red are opposite 180 apart i still have the same thing there's this is pointing up and this is pointing down but the white and the green are now pointing to the back and the blue and the white are pointing out towards me. It's going out. So how do we illustrate this on paper? That's what we need to figure out right now. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So this is the illustration right here. And so what we have is we have a solid bond up and a cross and an, a bond up. That is our solid bonds going up, right? And it could have been both bond solid down, same thing, but they're both pointing up. Now, when they're pointing up, we have a wedge, and that represents something that's coming off the page, that's coming out of the page, okay, towards you. And then you have right here a wedge, and then over here we have what's considered the back bond, and that's going to the back of the page. Remember how it's three-dimensional, like I just showed you my molecule. So the ones that are going behind you are dashes. The ones that are coming out towards you are wedges, and that's what we see here, okay? So this is wedges and dashes. Now notice that if I rotate 60 degrees, so notice that now here's my solid bond, right, like that, okay? And so I have the red up, red down. Actually, let me uh, track the exact red position for you, okay, because that might be misleading if I do it this way. So if I rotate 60 degrees, actually, the red is over here now, so this is now wedge coming out. Okay, and let me actually show this to you. I think it's something that you need to visualize. Now, so if I'm pointing the reds up and I change it so that it's going 60 degrees, notice how now it's coming out 
See that? It was up. Now it's out. Another 60. Now it's down. See that? Okay. So when I take the things that are pointing straight up and I rotate one of them 60 degrees, it now points out. Now I could have rotated 60 the other way and now it's pointing back. See that? So it could be either out or back depending on how you rotate, clockwise or counterclockwise. But that's the idea. Okay, and we'll come back to this molecule. Um, so I've rotated it 60 degrees, but what I want you to recognize is not so much the, the bond being red. Okay, so I'm going to erase this because I don't want you to think about it from a, a positioning. I want, I'm going to highlight this in yellow to show you that right now it's both pointing up the solid bonds. But when you do a rotation, now it points up and down. It's not the same atom. Remember, this is, not, this is a 60 degree turn. So, But what I want you to see is that now the solid bonds are not on the same side. They're opposite sides. These are two different rotations. The one in which the solid bonds is both pointing up or both pointing down is called eclipse. And we'll come back to that in a moment. Now, the one in which a solid bond is up and a solid bond's down, or one up, down, other way around, then it's staggered. So think about whether this one and that one are on the same side or opposite side. So I did like an arrow here to show you up and down, opposite or the same side. Now, the sore horse projection is like looking at a car from the side point of view. So imagine if you're looking at this car, which I wish was mine, but it's not. Imagine that you're looking at this nice car in the side profile. That's a sore horse projection. But what happens if you take the car and you turn it so you're looking straight on? Well, that's known as a Newman projection. So if we simply take our car and turn it, so in this case, we're turning it this way so that it's coming straight at us. Notice that you're looking at it head on, and that's what this represents here. So this circle represents the bond between the two atoms. So let me, again, give you a visualization of this. So imagine I'm looking at this, the two red carbons are pointing up, or whatever atoms they are, and now I'm going to take it and I'm going to make it look turn head on. Look what happens here. So now you have it so that these two here are eclipsed to each other. Notice how they're both pointing up? So they're eclipsing each other. And notice that you really, if you're looking head on, you can't see the back carbon. And what that circle represents is the bond between these two carbons. Okay, so this carbon in the front that you're looking at is actually located right there. That's the intersection between the three bonds. So there's a carbon and three bonds and then that big circle that you're looking at is the bond between the two atoms, the front and back atom. So this is the representation here that we're looking at. Okay, now, again, if I rotated this one this way, and so this, let's say, is the blue carbon here, now it's in the front. Now it's pointing in the front. But I could have rotated the other way as well. It doesn't mean you have to, right? You could rotate it in either direction where, let's say, this red carbon, you could have turned it so it became the front carbon. All right, we're going to learn more about this. Right now, I just want you to get the general tools, the ideas of how we draw. And now, okay, so let's go ahead and look at this one here. So let's say this carbon is blue, and now there it is in the front. Notice how it's got a bond pointing up. Well, when you turn, it's still pointing up. And then you have these other two bonds. And notice how this one's pointing down. Um, Let's see what I could use. So I'll point with right there. That's pointing down. And of course, it's pointing down over here. See? So you've got the bond pointing up and the bond pointing down when you turn it. So think of this as a car and think of turning it so that it's facing you or from the side point of view. That's the difference between a sore horse and these uh, Newman projections here. Okay. So this is what I want to go through right now for this part, for this page, actually. And so I hope this is clear. It's very simple. You're going to need a molecule. If you bought the molecule kit, make sure to use it. Uh, you don't need anything fancy. I'll get into more details about what you should build for your exam. You're allowed to bring a molecule to your exam. And so it is recommended that you do that. And what you want to do, actually, I'll just tell you now, is you don't need much. You just want to bring a molecule like this, but, you know, a small one, and give it three colors for both sides. That's all you need to do. Just have it so...